Welcome back to today's episode. Uh, we're here for the YouTube sessions. <laughs> and we've got a very special guest today. This is Kate. Uh, Kate, say hello to everybody. Thank you, thank you. Okay, maybe not. Today, upon the request of one of our longtime subscribers, we're going to go through a math problem together. This video is brought to you by Vital Proteins Collagen Water. Just kidding, it's definitely not. It's just what I'm drinking today. We've got another visitor. He is the man of the house. This is Grizzly. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, here's a comment I received from one of our longtime subscribers. I love the name. She was the goat. She was the goat. Nah, man, you're the goat. But it looks like you're having trouble with number 10 on the exponent properties. You finished everything else. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that problem together. This is number 10 on the properties of exponents, Desmos activity. I think this was the challenge problems, number 10. If I'm looking at this problem, I notice that I have two coefficients on the numerator, one on the denominator for the left-hand side, and then I only have one coefficient on the denominator on the right-hand side. What that tells me is that these three coefficients are going to cancel out and only going to have something on the denominator. I've got an x term with a power of something on top. I've got a lone x on the bottom. And then I've got only x's on the numerator on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we've got a y and a y to a power. So we're going to somehow combine those as well. My initial instinct is to work with the coefficients. So I'm going to try and figure out what numbers can go here, here, and here so that we can wind up getting a simplified denominator on this side. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use 1. The identity property of multiplication tells me that anything times 1 is going to be the other thing. Um, what if we used hypothetically a three and a six. I like these numbers because one times three is three. Three divided by six gives us a two. Now you might be asking why I'm selecting these numbers in particular. These are the ones that just stuck out to me. I'm gonna see where this takes me next. Uh, see what I can fill in with the other four empty boxes. There's going to be multiple solutions to this problem, so I am hoping to show just hoping to show one. Um, the next thing I'm noticing here is let's say I want to work with my x terms. I have the quotient property acting on the left hand side. I've got x to a power divided by another x is going to give me x to the something on the right hand side. These two numbers, this left-hand side and this right-hand side, they're going to be consecutive numbers. And I know that because x to the something divided by x, that quotient property tells me that I'm just subtracting one power. What if I used 5? And then that quotient property again, five, x to the power of 5 over x is going to give me x to the fourth i've got y times y to the something so again similar to the quotient property we've got the product property in this case you've got a y a single y times a y to the something we're going to wind up using consecutive numbers again it's not really going to matter which ones you use let's use seven and eight and that's it that's all the time we have for today. So if you have any other questions, you know how to contact me. Right now, all I need you to do is hit like and subscribe, wherever the buttons are. I'm not sure where they are. I'm just kind of like pointing everywhere on the bottom of the screen. If you want to learn more math, if you want to see some more examples, you can check out the Niles North Math YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a couple hundred videos for you to watch. If you need anything, you can check that out or you can reach out to me. Be well, be safe, and as always, math is life.